Okay, welcome everybody to this uh, live session with Global Alliance. Um, we today we, we we will be discussing the global PR and communications model, which was created, I believe, at the beginning of the year. We in today's live session, we're delighted to be joined by uh, Dr. Clara Fontan and Angel Alosa, uh, who have played a key role in making the. PR and communications model, what it is today. So in a few moments, we'll be, we'll be passing over to them. They'll be sharing a video, which essentially kind of just breaks down what the model is. And then after that, we'll be taking some questions uh, for a short amount of time. It is a live session. So this, this session will last between about 30 to 45 minutes. So we do encourage you to leave any questions you do have in the chat box and I'll make sure to, feed them back to Angel and Clara as uh, as we get to the Q&A. So I think without further ado, we'll pass it over to you guys. So all the best and look forward to it. Thank you very much indeed. And thanks to the CIPR for having us uh, and giving us the opportunity to, to present uh, the results of the PR global communication model. What we are going to do is uh, after a few seconds, I may say, we're going to show the broadcast uh, a video taking uh, 12 minutes. After the video, we'll have a Q&A session uh, with you. So we are very proud and, uh, and happy to be here after a long road, road show uh, where we have presented uh, this model all over the world. So now we are extremely happy to, to be with you and, and to share with you the, the main results. This uh, study has been uh, possible thanks to the steering committee where we had uh, our president, Justin Green, our immediate past president, as well as Amibel Sanchez representing South America. And uh, also she's responsible for the academic uh, activities in uh, the Global Alliance for PR and Communication Management. Dr. Wally Adamulekum from uh, Nigeria and Krita Kemal, the president of the Asian Public Relations Network uh, based in Indonesia. So this uh, study uh, was carried out uh, for 18 months. So now we are going to share with you the 12 minute video, and then we'll uh, continue with the Q&A. Thank you, see you. Global Alliance works across continents to shape the future of our profession, help practitioners deal with the main challenges they face in their organizations, and demonstrates the value and positive impact of communications. To further advance this mission, we have the pleasure today in launching the Global Alliance PR and Communication Model, developed in partnership with Corporate Excellence, Center for Reputation Leadership. The model defines the roadmap and building blocks of the functions of PR and communications that contribute to the creation of differentiation reputation, trust, and social legitimacy. The model consolidates Global Alliance's 2010 Stockholm Accords and the 2012 Melbourne Mandate and integrates Global Alliance's Global Capabilities Framework developed in partnership with Huddersfield University. The model enables organizations and professions worldwide to improve their leadership and business decision-making process while promoting a real and authentic connection with their stakeholders for a post-COVID-19 world. We are broadcasting from Corporate Excellence Center for Reputation Leadership. So let me tell you a little bit about us, who we are. We are a nonprofit corporate think tank. May I say an accelerator of innovation, research, applied knowledge and training specialized in intangible assets. This is a platform born 18 years ago, created and financed by 
large corporations in Spain and Latin, and Latin America. This is the platform where we started our collaboration with uh, uh, Global Alliance to build this roadmap. And the roadmap is uh, based on the, the challenges and opportunities that all organizations are facing around the world, which means basically the need to build and maintain a legitimacy and trust to increase uh, companies and organizations' reputation, as well as building a strong competitive uh, brand positioning able to differentiate our companies in the long run. And finally, creating a strong and strategic alignment with all our stakeholders, which means that the new model we are presenting today is a response to those challenges and uh, also a way of demonstrating the huge opportunity for professionals in the PR and communication arena to be the leaders in uh, precisely building uh, the proper answer to those challenges. It's been a two years project. And this project is building on uh, the Melbourne mandate, also integrating the uh, knowledge and the resources and the toolkit provided the, by the Global Capabilities Framework. And finally, building on those two, we are presenting now the Global PR and Communication Model 2021. The model. Let's talk about why, how, and what. Why? This model has uh, its deep reason why in answering the uh, four challenges and opportunities that all organizations around the world has. Those challenges relate to the need of building a long-standing differentiation, the need of uh, building and reinforcing the social and relationship capital, we call this engagement with all our stakeholders, the idea of uh, generating advocacy, basically activating our key ambassadors who are going to talk about us, who are going to recommend our products and services and protect us uh, during crisis and uh, uh, key moments of the organization. And finally, last but not least, all organizations need to build or rebuild trust and social legiti legitimacy to get and enlarge our license to operate. This is the reason why. How is by uh, building on, if I may repeat the concept, building on the building blocks, the, the five building blocks, starting with corporate purpose, which is uh, the first step of the model, it is the core of the model, and it is uh, the one who affects and helps the rest of the fourth building, ball, building blocks. The second one is uh, brand and culture. Brand and culture addresses the need of reaching a long-standing differentiation. Then we have uh, reputation and reputational risks. Here, what we have is the, the tools that we can use to build trust, social legitimacy, and uh, as I said, basically getting our license to operate. 
We have two other building blocks. They are transversal uh, key conditions to make it happen. One of them, and probably the most important one, is communications. You see that communications is a round circle here in, uh, in blue color. Without communications, nothing would exist. Communications is building realities. That's the reason why it is uh, uh, circulating permanently and in a dynamic form the model. And finally, the, uh, the last building block is a permanent and transversal activity of listening, of helping companies being connected with the expectations of uh, their stakeholders on a permanent and continuous basis to be able to match what we do with all these uh, expectations, dynamic expectations and uh, demanding expect expectations that help us in becoming an excellent organization. This model is the result of these two years of global consensus research. The global PR and communication model, its main objective is to provide organizations with uh, the key building blocks to be able to navigate in the uh, intangible economy. And at the same time, companies, organizations, need uh, to have in front of the management of the building block the uh, professional who's going to be able to do these tasks in an excellent way and uh, provide an, a strategic leadership in PR and communications management. Our model is fulfilling these two different tasks which are absolutely complementary. From one side, the proper answer to organizations and then to professionals highlight the uh, huge opportunity to become the experts, the one who has the knowledge to implement this model within the organization. So, in summary, the excellent management of purpose, brand, corporate culture, reputation, and reputational risk and communications enables organizations to build a lasting differentiation, enables the organizations to achieve engagement, to achieve authentic advocacy and uh, trust and social legitimacy. On one hand, long-lasting differentiation, and on the other hand, the license to operate. From here, Angel and I want to give special thanks to all the Global Alliance members and professional and companies whose invaluable contributions have enabled this research and the development of the PR and communication model of the future. And also, we wanted to highlight, if you want to know more about all these information and the things that we have been talking today, all the materials, the full report, the secret summary and, and this video will be available in this site. Yes, and, and please remember that uh, the PR and communication model is not a research, is not just a document that you can read. It's not that. It's a, a practical toolkit for helping you in advancing both in your career as well as helping organizations, companies and uh, any other institution in really facing the future with uh, optimism and being sure that they can navigate in the e intangible economy. Please use it.
So thank you. Here we are. Back again. Yes. Thank you, guys. Um, so, yeah, feel free to put any questions you do have in the chat function. I believe we have one already from Alistair, and he asked whether, so, what a, what a PR professional should expect if they were to implement the model in their own organisation. What will the model help them to do better? And I think that one is for both mm -hmm. Angel and Clara. Yes. Clara, do you want to start with it? I think that, yeah, I can start, yeah. And then Angel, you can uh, do mm -hmm. that, yes, as you can see they're more convenient. So uh, related to the first question, um, what we are seeing is like, um, and according to the model and the result that we have discovered is like, implementing the model um, and all these building blocks and dimension, you, uh, we are seeing that the peer and communication director or professional um, will uh, strengthen, uh, will be a strengthen, a strengthening the function inside of the company. And, and we have discovered that doing that, uh, there are more probabilities of having a seat in the C-suite table. So there is a, a, a main key finding here in according to the model and is related to purpose in two aspects. Um, we have discovered that um, purpose uh, understood as, as a fundamental basis of the strategy and as a framework for guiding the decision process that guarantees consistency, coherence, and integrity is play a key role in all dimensions of the model. So we have this discovered that defining the purpose uh, and activating it through the company, then the, the significant impact on all dimensions of the model will be greater. So it means that we need to work on it if we want to manage intangible assets in a better way. But at the same time, we have discovered that uh, the process behind of the definition and activation of the purpose is key. So if we follow a participatory process also, uh, we will have a greater impact on all dimension of the model. And according to the model, those peer and communication directors or professionals who are leading the definition and implementation of purpose, but also the process behind that uh, are um, increasing the role inside of the companies. So we are seeing that you need to manage this, um, this uh, purpose as the starting point with the impact on all dimension of the model if you want to, 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 to strengthen your function or your influ influential role inside of the uh, coalition of power inside of the company and also having the opportunity to participate in the, in the making decision process. So uh, this is... Um, what we have seen that implementing the model, you will have the opportunity to increase your role inside of the company and, and the opportunity to, to guarantee or to look for a place in the C-suite table. Um, and, and I think that the model, uh, according to what we have discovered, will help them to know what to do and what are the main um, dimensions and, 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 functions, and functions that they would have under the, the umbrella uh, or under the department or, or responsibilities uh, to increase or to manage intangible assets in an excellent way, helping their companies to achieve these main challenges. Because the ch challenges that we are facing are the one for all organizations in any country. We need to guarantee trust and social legitimacy for guarantee the license to operate. We need to create differentiation uh, and also create engagement with our stakeholder and promote advocacy in a bigger scale. So we are seeing that uh, the model will help them to, to find the solutions or the main tools to answer these key challenges. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Clara. <clears throat> if I, I may add, yes. I had a question myself, actually. It, um, it seems like a lot can, and there's a lot that public relations practitioners mm -hmm. can take on board and that they can apply in their own work but from both of your perspectives they're kind of one thing that they can discover and take away from today's session uh, Liam I'm, we are losing your your connection we can't hear you one moment, one moment. but 
Yes, we, we couldn't listen to you very well, but you were asking about the main findings of the or discoveries or the main yeah. discovery or findings of the model. Can you hear me so a bit? Um, if you make... mm. No, 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 not really. No worries. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, um, we've got a few more questions. Yeah, essentially, what was mm. the takeaway point from uh, that public relations practitioners could take? Related to that, uh, well, we, we here we have these key conditions or these key pillars that PR uh, professionals should embrace if they want to, to, to manage intangible assets in a good way. But one of the takeaways that we have been that we have seen here in the uh, seeing the model and how to apply it, it's related to the fifth building block, the one related to connected intelligence. We are seeing this uh, that if we want to 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 strengthen our function. Um, uh, as a key role for the future of companies and organizations, we need to work in, in the development of, uh, of intangible asset metrics to demonstrate our contribution to generate value in the long term. So we are seeing that we need to, 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 to have standards and metrics, solid metrics, to, talk, uh, to demonstrate our contribution contribution, and also to, to know um, to help the company to, to make the better decisions. Because with data and 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 we will be connecting, as Angel was saying in the in the video, um, expectations of our stakeholders uh, with things that uh, with the decision that we are making, and we will have provide uh, advisor uh, to our companies to 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 face these challenges and also to 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 find uh, or to to build differentiation uh, trust. So according to to the model, one of the main takeaways. Of course, purpose as the reason of being, as a way to 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 to, um, to activate through your brand, your your employees' behavior, the brand reputation. But one of the key concepts that we have seen here is the importance of building a solid and sophisticated system of metrics to provide contextual intelligence and social listening to make better decisions. Yes, I may say <clears throat> that uh, the opportunity for PR professionals is uh, really becoming the connecting leader and bringing these uh, knowledge and the voice of the different stakeholders to the C-suite. It is an opportunity for any company, both in the private or in public sector. So I think that uh, this is the uh, fourth <laughs> building block, this idea of connected intelligence metrics of intangible assets. And we have to bear in mind with, that uh, when we talk about intangible assets, if we take into account the value of companies uh, in the stock exchange, we realize that 50% of the total value belongs to the intangibles. And here we have a purpose, brand, culture, reputation, communication, ward, which are the, uh, probably the most valuable intangibles to be managed. So there is a, a huge opportunity, if I may say, for PR professionals to uh, start a roadmap like the model that we are providing to manage in an integrated way those key intangibles. The CEOs are expecting to have a, a specialist, the C-suite, able to protect and to strength these at least 50% of the value and risk of any organization. Well, there is a very practical question here about the availability of uh, all the materials. So everything is available for free and for everyone. So uh, the, uh, the report, the summary report is uh, written and corrected in perfect English, thanks to Alistair Macapra. And uh, it has been now uh, translated or in the process of being translated into uh, 10 different languages. And yes, everything is available for, uh, for you together with uh, the, new, uh, the new pieces of research 
or information that we have uh, developed very recently for the Global Alliance, like uh, the one focusing on the ethics, ethics as, as the cornerstone of PR and communication role. Great, thank you. Um, so we've got a few minutes left, guys. So if anyone does have any last minute questions, do feel free to pop them in the, the chat function now. But um, just like to say, take this opportunity to say thank you both to Clara and Angel for making today happen. It's um, It's been very interesting and uh, we'll make sure that all the resources that they've spoken about today will be sent to all, all registrants. And um, this session is being recorded. So if you are a CIPR member, you can claim five CPD points for attending this. And yeah, just make sure to flag that when you're submitting your CPD. But yeah, thank you to everyone who joined today. And um, it was great to see you. So thanks again, guys. Take it easy. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much. Do we have time for another question? Uh, yes, I'm sure we do. Um, yeah, because we have another one been... here from uh, Alistair. Uh, I think it's a very interesting one because uh, he's asking that from experience so far, what do you think the main obstacles to implementing this model might be? So let me start. <laughs> Basically, uh, the challenges are internal ones. Basically, the, uh, the way we organize uh, most of, uh, or, or a good majority of companies is uh, by silos. So it means that uh, different departments are in charge of the relationship with different stakeholders, as well as with communications with all those stakeholders. And uh, the challenge is uh, basically to use the model to break those silos and to uh, increase the awareness that uh, basically when uh, everybody in charge of uh, the different relationship with different stakeholders uh, work together, then the probabilities of uh, building a strongest uh, reputation as are much higher. And uh, stronger reputation means that uh, all the uh, objectives, both in terms of uh, bonuses, as well as in terms of engagement for anyone in the company are easier to get. So for probably reputation is the, the only uh, intangible asset can uh, break those silos, provided that uh, uh, according to what uh, Clara has just said, we introduce a KPI of reputation linked to the uh, bonuses of the directors of the company. That's the way everybody will like, would be uh, willing to cooperate and to break the uh, traditional silos uh, of our companies. Yeah, fully agree, Angela. Um, I wanted to add something related to that. And according to the model, if you have the opportunity to read the full report, you will see that this idea of creating mm -hmm. transversal committees or this function of cross cutting way of managing intangible set, uh, assets, it, it is a, a big opportunity for the peer and communication function, uh, increasing the importance inside of the organization to break silos and also to, to organize um, uh, transversal uh, teams to, to achieve the excellent management of, of the intangible asset. And of course, I wanted to just for finishing to say that communication is, a, is, is one of the main functions um, for, for peer and communication professional. And this is why it's, it's a cycle around, around the, the model. And it's really important because it builds reality. But what we have discovered is like the function will be greater and it's going to be a whole challenge. And it will be greater if we introduce under the umbrella purpose uh, uh, the brand and culture uh, 
saying that you need to create a brand experience alignment to all your touch point and alignment aligning behaviors of your employees because it's a way to to make alive the purpose and also reputation or reputational risk according to the model uh, is a key function if we want to strengthen the role uh, of the peer and communication function inside of the making decision process so i i wanted to highlight just that because it's another little, another key findings that we can see in the in the model and just for finishing, I said that as Angel was um, highlighting in the video, it's not it's more than a report, more than a model. It should be like a toolkit, a path for being applied in your daily jobs and for helping the function to 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 go ahead, to 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 see the future and to see how we can demonstrate the contribution of our function um, for creating better organizations and doing that having a positive impact on society and other. Areas, yes. Mm -hmm. If I say, I would like to thank the uh, Hungarian PR Association because they have just posted the message uh, and they are willing to translate into Hungarian uh, the uh, global PR and communication model. So we thank you very much indeed. It will represent the eleventh language available for for everybody. <laughs> thank you. It, well, it's a great news uh, in real time. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> last news. Yeah. So, final question as well um, from Nicola here. Um, Nicola asked, is there any suggestions in relation to the marketing department and CMO taking, per taking purpose as part of their remit and PR and comms professionals just being in the tactical application? Yes. If I uh, may say, the, the question of how to define and activate purpose is, is, is a key one, because what we see is uh, many companies and organizations around the world saying that they have already defined their purpose. And in fact, they are not doing the, uh, the proper job, if I may say, because they uh, understand purpose as a communication exercise and not a massive transformation one. So that's the reason why the PR communication uh, function has a very interesting uh, opportunity here, according to the results of the study, because uh, uh, companies need a specialist in uh, defining the proper way, the, uh, the right way to define and activate purpose, not for your stakeholders, but with them. It means having a participatory uh, process to uh, guarantee that both internally and externally the purpose is going to activate uh, uh, positive uh, behaviors. So it's, it's uh, a key role for the uh, marketing function when coming to activate purpose in all the touch points of the brand which means that uh, there has to be an, uh, an alignment of all the forms of communication and the uh, coherence that we provide in every single touch point, including when I say touch point, I mention also, or I include uh, commercial advertising, as well as uh, all the rest of the, uh, the possibilities that we have as a company to uh, connect with our stakeholders. So marketing has to be on board. And as I said, when uh, purpose is defined with all your uh, stakeholders, then you have the possibility of creating into the organization a building belief shared by uh, marketing as well as human resources, communication, and many other areas, which are key to uh, bring to life purpose and to transform uh, this purpose into uh, a good reputation for the whole company. Yes, I, I would say um, that there is a call to action related to that in the model, because we have seen that most of the companies have defined the purpose or are, um, are, are saying that it's important. But then when we ask them, only half of them have, uh, are, only half of them are working on the activation and implementation. So, and at the same time, when we ask how they 
defines the purpose, what we see is like most of them, um, instead of following this process that Angel was mentioning, this participatory process, taking into account expectation and demand of your key stakeholders, most of them uh, have followed traditional process from top to down, uh, or uh, adapting traditional concept as vision and mission, but not with your stakeholders so we need to, to to there is a call to action according to the model because if we want to manage intangible assets in an excellent way taking it uh, and and having a greater a space in the c-suite table or uh, participating in the decision process we need to to define the process uh, or we need to lead the definition of the purpose following this the right method or the participatory process and according to the model most of us are not doing that. Mm -hmm. And if I may say, and adding uh, just an additional information about this, when asking the uh, 1,400 interview interviewees in 47 countries, we ask them uh, who was uh, dealing the uh, process of defining and activating purpose, as well as who is in charge of the corporate brand, not the product brand. And in both cases, regarding purpose and the corporate brand, they do mention the uh, PR and communication function as uh, the one who's leading those two and not the marketing department. So it's more the other way, the other way around. It is uh, the PR and comms professionals who are defining the uh, strategic component of the uh, corporate brand and the uh, corporate purpose. And uh, if I may say, the marketing department has a, a more tactic uh, role in uh, uh, bringing to life this purpose through advertising and commercial communication, as well as adapting the purpose to the product brands. Great, thank you. I think that just about wraps up our, our session for today. Um, if anyone does any, have any questions that spring to mind after today's session, please do feel free to email them to myself. That's uh, liamt at cipr.co.uk. I'll pop that in the chat in just a moment, just so you've got record of it. But thanks everyone for attending today. A special thank you to Clara and Angel. Uh, it's great to have you and um, yeah, uh, as I, as I said earlier, the resources will be sent through so um, you can take another look at what you've learned about today. And thanks again for coming. Excellent. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much. Bye.